Here's another inside the code video. Remember, if you like these videos, click, oh, I can't make myself do it. Okay, today, something super sexy came out. Simon Wilson published a data set UI thing, but that's not what I'm gonna talk about. Instead, I'm gonna talk about the last sexy thing that came out, Will McGugan's Textual. I was on a podcast with Michael and Brian on Python Bytes, and I was talking about a Twitter thread that Will had about magic and trying to reduce boilerplate by letting the code do introspection and some variable names and stuff like that. I've always had a little bit of issue with magic, but he made a compelling case and he was able to keep my pie happy. So let's take a look inside textual at one of these places where he reduces boilerplate by doing the work for you. So I'm over in PyCharm and I'm in his example for animation. Let's go ahead and run it. And I'm going to run it. It's gonna come up down here. It's not gonna work correctly because PyCharm needs a little bit of help on this. We need to say, when you run this, pretend to be a terminal. Okay, so I'm gonna run it. I do wanna figure this out. Tomorrow, we'll make an announcement that explains why. Now it all works fine. You see, I get all this animation stuff and I can hit quit to get out. All right, great. We're able to run just okay. But let's take a look inside the code and let's see an example of boilerplate reduction using Will's super cool ideas. First, a different super cool idea. I'm gonna go to, um, out of that into uh, the source and look at context. And this freaked me out the first time I saw it. This is like the first example I've personally seen in the wild of uh, async IO context variables so that you can have app everywhere inside a thread async IO thing here or whatever, I don't know. And all you have to do is import active app and it will grab it. No need to have like, uh, I don't know, module level globals or something like that. Uh, it's being done uh, as one of these context bars. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then also I thought this was pretty cool. He had a little discussion selecting uh, feedback from people about where, what should the name of the file be where you put some of your types? Well, these aren't just types, baby. These are protocols. Yay to Will for going out on a limb and doing that. You know it's protocols because it says protocol and it's got the triple dot ellipsy thing because there's not really an implementation here. Protocols, cool, but I hit a dead end when I tried to use it. Anyway, back to the code. If you go and look at, um, we'll say, we'll say this one. This is the app that's being fired up and run at the bottom. This one says async and await. That was one of the boilerplates that Will wanted to try to remove. Uh, he came up with a pattern of sniffing because one of these functions, when you put async on it, it is actually a callable or awaitable. And you can look at it and see, hey, did they put async? Did they not put async? If they did, if they did put async, I'm going to await it. If they didn't, I'm just going to call it. Here we have async. Here we have not async, not await. I'm going to put a debug in here. Actually, no. I'm going to go back and do the thing that I thought was really cool when I was looking for this. Here's how I kind of, I start at the top and then I'll show where we are here and come back from the bottom. I'm like, inspect, show, Will, show me how you do some of this sniffing around and looking at return values or things like that to see if you can reduce boilerplate. And here's what I found, uh, reactive, which should be the subject of another one of my inside the code videos. Reactive goes to inspect and ask for is awaitable. And I'll go down a little bit. Well, no, I'll just go here. And then I'll say is awaitable. See where it's used. And take a look at this. 
he will get watch results, and then he'll look to see if it's awaitable, and if so, he'll await it. So that you didn't have to do that uh, with the async dance yourself. Let's take a look, though. If I wasn't, if I didn't really know how to look for this, I'm going to go back to the other side. I'm going to put a debug statement here. I'm going to run this code under the debugger. Oop, nope. I'm going to run this code under the debugger. And it's going to fire up. And down here, when I toggle the sidebar, it's going to run my code. Cool. So this is a framework. It calls you. What was the call path to get here? I'm going to walk back up through this. Ah, look, the thing that called me was where we just were. So I'm sitting on this line. And if I um, take a look at this code, and let's say I run to here, I've got watch results. And it's none. And so am I going to step into is awaitable? No, I'm not. I'm going to step over it because it's not an awaitable. I'm going to put a breakpoint there. Go ahead and get that over with. I'm going to go back and move my breakpoint inside here. Actually, I'll go back and remove that breakpoint. And I'm going to run my code again. I'll stop and rerun. And this time, because this is on load, I don't need to trigger an event in the actual UI to uh, make something happen. I'm inside my code. What called me? All right. Is awaitable. It was an, an awaitable. And so I stepped into it. I'll put a breakpoint here and rerun the whole thing again. I'm going to sit, I'm going to be sitting on here and result is this coroutine co object that I was just on, on under load, coroutine object. Yeah, now we know, is awaitable. Let's go navigate to it. And so it's looking to see, am I a coroutine type? Why, well, yes. Yes, I am. I know that because I can read the word coroutine here. I will step, will I step over or into when I do this? I will step into because it is actually awaitable. So to wrap this up, in my code, I have uh, two things that I have, two methods that I supplied on load and watch under show under bar. And one case I had to do the I, I didn't have I did the async await dance. In another case I didn't. And he reduced boilerplate. I didn't have to do async and await in here. He's right on this. I'm wrong on this. Next video, I think I'll take a look at the reactive stuff because it's really interesting to what I've been working on.